Hello. Bill O'Reilly's done. Because of sexual harassment. Sean Hannity's in trouble. Roger Ailes did horrible things to women. And we have to punish these people with money. We need lots of money. And we have to shut everything down. Because sexual harassment is horrible. I don't know, man. I'm not buying it. What is sexual harassment, first of all? I think it was started in the 70s. The, the, the law says that there's no quid pro quo and there's no sexual harassment. That's what sexual harassment is. It's two things. And quid pro quo is blow me and I'll give you a raise or you're out of here. Uh, an offer you can't refuse. And then sexual harassment is this nebulous thing that's just floating through the air. And my experience has been about one in ten cases have some kind of merit. But... These other nine cases are ruining it for women in the workforce. And I think in the case of Fox, you have women who are pretty, who get hired up there just because they're pretty, and they're with the big leagues, and they, they can't handle it. They go, oh, this is too tense. And I'm used to this kind of talk. I remember I met Jimmy Miller, Dennis, Dennis Miller's brother, I was working with him. He's like a Bill O'Reilly level of success, but in the comedy world. And the first time he saw me, he goes, let me see this guy's cock. <laughs> and he walks over and he points to my package and goes, I knew it would be big. And then we go to a meeting soon after, and he's in the meeting going like this to the furniture while HBO's on their way. You know why? Because it was funny. It's like uh, that story about Casey Affleck recently where he uh, kicked a line producer out of her hotel room and said, we're going to be boning chicks in here and get lost. <gasps> Sue him! I need money for that horrible event. By the way, the, the, the settlements are always in the millions with these things. How painful is it to be asked to leave your room so someone can bone in it? I would want one maker's mark in fees for that. And if that did happen to me and my boss wanted to use my room, I would say, okay. In fact, we had a little code when I was in college where you'd put like a sock on your doorknob and it was, oops, stay out of that room. So these women are being injected into the man's world and they're saying, oh, I don't like it here. It's mean. It's too intense. Yeah. You want it to be part of our world. That's the way it is. And some of these allegations, I mean, Jamu Green is an example, as far as I'm concerned, of affirmative action hire. I think she's a wildly unattractive, talentless woman who doesn't have any original ideas. She just gets out there and she says, black people are poor and we need to blah, 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 white privilege. And when you go, what are you talking about? She goes, you don't know. I'm black. I, I know what it's like. So basically, all, she has a PhD in herself. She does me search. And then her allegations are, um, O'Reilly told her to show more cleavage in the makeup room once. By the way, that's true. If you're unattractive, show other assets. That was a very harsh and true thing he said to her. And you don't deserve money or compensation for that. And then also he said, uh, she said that she had a bet with him. About two years later, wow, quite systematic these attacks, aren't they? Miss Green was making an appearance on Mr. Riley's show. Before the segment, the two discussed a bet they made for dinner. She had won the bet, but O'Reilly never paid up. So when I'm reading that as an employer, I think avoid black women. See, you've made all the cool black women pariahs, Jamu, with your bullshit. And that's what the majority of sexual harassment is. It should just be abolished. If a guy grabs you and he's your boss, charge him with assault. That's an unwanted touch. We have laws for this. If he says, I'll give you a raise if you blow me, say no. That's what I'd say. If Roger Ailes wants to feel me up so I can do vocal exercise, say no. And by the way, if you did it, aren't you a prostitute? And then if you sue for having done it, aren't you a very expensive prostitute? That's what I'm smelling here. A lot of really pricey call girls getting two million and ten million. Jesus, what do you do? Burn your skin off in front of your family? Why do you deserve so much money for an uncomfortable remark? I heard rumors one of the worst things he said was, I want you to put my thumb, put your thumb up my ass when I come. First of all, a boss said that to me, I'd laugh my head off. But the idea of, ooh. You know, this happened to me at Fox. I guess I can talk about this because I already burned the bridge. But I, I was getting mic'd up when I was doing the, the show uh, Independence, I believe. And uh, I do this dumb joke every time I get mic'd because they go under your shirt. I go, ooh, that thing's freezing. Whoa, whoa. It makes people laugh. And then I go, my second part to this insanely good joke is I go, ah, at least my gynecologist warms up his forceps a little bit. Now, that joke does well with the ladies because I know about OBGYN, so it's unusual to hear from a man. A man talking about his gynecologist is amusing. But then everyone laughed at that. The sound guys, the camera crew. So I got kind of intoxicated with the laughter, as people in the funny community do. And I said, I can feel my cunt lips crawling up into my body here. That made all the laughter go, ha, ah. and it bombed. Didn't do well. Oh, well, made a joke, went too far. It bent it, it broke. 
And that woman apparently fi- filed a complaint to HR. And I think her boyfriend was a lawyer and she wanted to make money from it. And I heard through the grapevine, I wasn't supposed to know any of this, by the way. There's all kinds of people who get banned for sexual harassment and don't know. I heard about a guy who bear hugged Harris Faulkner and was booted out. And to this day, he has no idea why. And I can't tell him why because I don't know who it is. But anyway, um, she typed this letter to HR and she said, and then he said a word I have never heard before. See you. And she typed out this horrible word that I said describing women's genitalia. It is a pretty bad word. That's what I was going for with the joke. But you go, what have you done, lady? You've made it. You've made everyone uncomfortable around you. You've made the work environment less fun because you can't hang with the big boys. You know, and, and it gets to the point where even innocent men who don't even mean sexual harassment are getting harassed. There was this guy, John Solosky. I think he was a dean of law at Grady College. It's back in 05. And they were in a dangerous neighborhood after a dinner they had for the faculty. And he goes, are you here alone? Uh, And she thought he was hitting on her. He wasn't. He was worried that she was going to walk home in a dangerous neighborhood. The guy's happily married. But it still counted as sexual harassment because that's how she interpreted it. You see what you're doing? You're turning women in these Fabergé eggs that don't belong in the workforce. So you say, we need to go through the glass ceiling, and then you're more fragile than glass when you get there. He fought and eventually had it removed, but we've been through this a million times. My own dad went through this when he was at working for a, a, a data science company. He said, uh, he was talking to some female friend of his. I think my mom was even there. And he said, oh, he's bald. And he goes, women love bald men because it reminds them of a penis. Woman laughed. Someone overheard it and made a complaint to HR on her behalf. And then when they brought it up with her, she goes, what? She didn't even remember it at first. And she goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought Jim was funny. What are you talking about? So all of these allegations, all of these horrible cases of things are are 90% untrue. Dove Charney, uh, Arena Morales, and Kimberlo, they wanted a quarter of a billion for being sexually harassed by him. It was later proven to be a lie. But still, you need a quarter bill? (laughs) <laughs> what did he do? Rape you with uh, cacti? I don't understand how you get to that number. Uh, but even the worst ones, like where you say, give me, I will, you can't work here unless you have sex with me. For the sake of the greater good, let that not be a crime. That guy's going to fry himself. The natural meritocracy of the market will go, that guy is the worst. Don't work with him. Eventually, no one wants to be around him. There's this myth of one big, strong, rich white man standing at the gates and saying, you can't come in here unless you blow me. No, the free market moves around it. And by being so petrified of that scenario and crushing careers and charging tens of millions and and having all these suits where everyone settles, and by the way, when they settle, it doesn't mean it happened. It means they can't afford or can't be bothered to spend a million dollars and fight it for five years all the way to the Supreme Court. It's, it's easier to settle. And in Hollywood, they're settling every day for 40 grand because some cokehead got fired and wants to punish her employer. It's just part of the economy down there. Wait a minute. Stop. 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 I just remembered something. I was a sex object. Yeah. When I started my media empire, all of the people in marketing, the people who would give print ads, all the music, uh, all the record labels and all the fashion people, they were all cougars. In fact, one of the guys I knew in Toronto who did graphic design, I think he invented the term cougar and he had to go on dates with them too. And they would abuse their power. And they would abuse it worse than men because they were old and ugly and they felt better than men and they weren't used to having power, you know, sort of evolutionarily. And they would make us jump through hoops, you know? And that's how you got ads. You would go and and one of the guys I know who had a company back then said, we ate our way to the top. And you still see that today, by the way. Uh, You see, if if you're in a conservative movement or any sort of major project where you need donors, a lot of these donors are divorcees. They're divorced women who have tons of money from their husband who was in finance. They got plastic surgery. And you have to dance with them in the event and they kiss you because they're drunk and it's just something you put up with. So I didn't realize that till right now. But yeah, we get sexually harassed too. And you know what we do? We roll our eyes. We don't demand a quarter bill. We roll our eyes. All right, sorry. Take it away, me. What sexual harassment has become in 2017 is a stupid, mythical beast of corruption that is actually leaving women worse off than when they went in. It's proving that women don't belong in the workforce. And for all the true cases we have, we have another 90% of bullshit cases. 
And what we have here on our hands is something that is showing that women shouldn't be in the workforce. It's hurting the economy. I don't want that to be true. So let's just erase it. If you get assaulted, you get assaulted. If you get sexually harassed, quit. Sorry, life's unfair. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Rebel Edge, where you can find all the videos that are exactly like this one, but different.